what is the difference between a relation and a function? Well, a relation, of course, is just a set of ordered pairs. The first variable is uh, the domain. The second is the range. Now, what makes a relation a function is that all the first variables are different. All the inputs are different. That will make it a function. So notice that in the first one, you have two inputs that are the same but different outputs. Therefore, this is not a function. Where in the second two, all of them are different. All the inputs are different. So that means that we know we have a function. Now, how can I tell if a relation is a one-to-one -one function? Well, first of all, it has to be a function, so we eliminate the one that's not. And now what I know is that all the outputs have to be different. So if I have two outputs the same, then I know it can't be a one-to-one -one function. So notice in the second one here, R2, it's not one-to-one -one because you have B and C going to the same point, where the second, or R3 here, they all go to something different, so that one is a function. Why does the horizontal line test tell us whether the graph of a function is one-to-one? -one? Well, again, one-to-one -one means that outputs are all different for each input. So what we, when we look at a graph, what a graph is, is it models the ordered pairs in a relationship. Now the x-axis models the inputs, the y-axis is the output. So if I look at the first one here, you'll notice that my output for one goes back to two different possibilities here, one and minus one. So that means that I, if I want to know what the output for one is, this, these are the inputs, it goes to one. Input goes to one. So therefore I have two um, inputs that go to the same output, it's not one to one. Notice here for this function, every output goes to exactly one input no matter where it is. So notice what the horizontal line test is doing in each one of them is it tells you how many outputs. If it only hits it once, there's one output, it's one to one. If it hits it in more than one spot, it's not one to one. All right, is this a function? Well, we could try to graph it, or we could make it much simpler. We could just do pick two values for, uh, well, let's actually do the right problem. That would be helpful. Is this, is this a function? Now, let's just pick a couple values and figure out. Remember, x goes first, y goes second, so... If I pick a y to be 1 and y to be minus 1, notice when I square it, I get 1. And when I square it, I get 1. And notice now here that we have two x values that are giving us two different y values, so the answer is no. It's not a function. Is this a function? Well... Let's see, if I do something like we did before, like just pick values, we want two values that are going to give us one. So I could plug in, well, how about two, if I plug in a one for x, then y would have to be one half, that would give me a one, so I could get one and one half, that would work. If I plugged in a different number, like minus 1, I'd have to be minus 1 half, so that'd be 1 half like that. So are we getting something different? Well, yeah, I suppose. So let's say we just solve this by dividing that over. We would get y is equal to 1 over 2x. So every value I plug in, I would get something that... Um, gives me a unique value because each unique number here is going to give me a unique number there. All right, so let's evaluate our function that they're giving us. f of x is equal to 6x minus 1 over 5x plus 2. Now we're supposed to do it at f is equal to negative 3, f is equal to 
f of 2, f of minus a, minus f of a, and f of a plus h. So f of minus 3. Well, we plug in 3 into everywhere we have an x. So we have x is minus 3 minus 1, 5 minus 3 plus 2. So we get negative 18 minus 1 over negative 15 plus 2. Negative 19 over negative uh, 13 gives us 19 over 13. Now f of 2, that would be minus 1. 6 times 2 minus 1. 5 times 2 plus 2. So that would give me 12 minus 1 over 10 plus 2 which is 11 over 12. All right, so let's see what else do we have here. F of minus A, that would give me 6 times minus A minus 1 over F times minus A plus 2, which would give me minus 7A minus 1 over minus 5A plus 2. Are we done there? Sure, we can do some other manipulations like factor a minus out of the top and the bottom. and So we, if we did that, we'd get 7a plus 1 over 5a minus 2. Then the minuses, the subtraction, you know, the minus signs, they uh, divide out. We get 7a plus 1 over 5a plus 2. All right, so let's do this one. This is just put plug a minus into so we plug in a minus and then we put in just put in 6a minus 1 over 5a plus 2 should I could I move it into the top or the bottom sure because you know we have the rule with fractions right minus a over b is equal to a over minus b is equal to minus a over b they're all the same thing so it's just a matter of style at that point all right, so now we want to plug in this thing right here. So let's just squeeze it in. F of A plus H. So again, whatever we get, we plug it in for the X. So I have 6 over A plus H minus 1 over 5 A plus H plus 2. Simplify that to 6A plus 6H minus 1 over 5A plus 5H plus 2. Can I divide anything out? No, because the rule is, right, A times B over A times C. What's the operation between them? It's multiplication, not addition. So that's when you can divide out and get B over C. I can't divide anything out here because I have these pluses and minuses, and that's just not the way it works. All right, let's try this one. So I have g of x is equal to x squared plus 2x, and we're supposed to evaluate g of x minus g of a over x minus a, and x is not equal to a. Sorry about the sloppy handwriting there. All right, so really this is to make sure that you're not dividing by zero, and that's just kind of the key thing. But uh, So in other words, just plug in what we need to. So I want to evaluate the given function. So in other words, let's just plug all this stuff in. So this would be x squared plus 2x minus. Now this subtraction means that it's a times the whole th or being subtracting the whole thing. So I really need to have a parentheses in here like this. Like that. Now I can distribute the minus, or the negative sign, and I get something that looks like that over x minus a. Now, the, let's group the squares together and the linear terms together, and we get x squared minus a squared. And I'm going to put parentheses around it. You'll see for a second. And then these two, I'm going to get plus 2x minus 2a all over x minus a. Now this one, and I know this is something that you you know from college algebra, you factor this one into, it's a difference of perfect squares. Factor a 2 out of this one. 
And notice then I can factor x minus a out of these two terms. So I get x minus a. Let's use square brackets just to differentiate. And I have x plus a plus, oops, a, getting ahead of myself there, plus 2 all over x minus a. Now I can divide these out because what's the operation between here? Multiplication. So these two terms divide out and I'm left with x plus a plus 2. All right, so let's try this little question here. Square root x plus 2, f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 2. Okay, so we want to evaluate f of 7. So let's just plug it in, right? Square root of 9 is 3. Simple enough. And then b is solve f of x equals 4. So we just plug that in. Set it equal to 4 because I'm just replacing f with that. Square both sides. Subtract 2. And we have our solution. Now, anytime you square a square root, good idea to go back and check to make sure it works. 16, put that in there. Yeah, you get 14 plus 2 is 16. You get 8. eight. Look at the graph and figure out what the problem is. So if you can see my little mouse here, right? It says f of 0. So we don't know what that function is. We just know what the graph is. So you go to 0, go up to the value, the y value, which is 1. So the answer for a would be 1. This one, it says, what is f of x if it's equal to negative 3? So we go down to negative 3 because now negative 3 is a y value. And you read over to notice that we have two possibilities. So our solution will be negative 2 or positive 2 because those two values if I go to negative 3 go over and up there's my x value go over and up there's my x value negative 2 and 2